kaum maknya ni tak diterima dalam Islam. Susah. Tak boleh accept. Saya Natasha. Saya salah seorang daripada transseksual. Paling betul-betul saya jadi masa umur saya 16 lah. Saya hmm, dah setiap belajar lagi pun. Saya ada kenal kawan-kawan dekat rumah maknya. Okay, dia ajak saya macam mana cara make up, macam mana buat rambut, macam mana makan pee hormon, pakai lipstick semua. Saya cuba pakai baju perempuan. Uh, mak ayam ayam aja makan pil hormon mavlon. Kita kan lelaki kan bila makan hormon dia jadi perubahan makan hormon jadi muka muka nampak perempuan kulit nampak licin boleh tumbuh breast sikit. Mula-mula uh, keluarga mana-mana keluarga pun kalau dah tahu anak dia nak jadi perempuan kan, lelaki nak jadi perempuan, mesti tak boleh accept. Orang sekeliling mesti cakap kan, anak kau maknya macam tu pakai perempuan. Masa tu kalau parent tak accept, kita jadi sedih. Rasa macam, eh kenapa lah bila jadi macam ni kan, parent tak nak terima kita. Menangislah kat rumah. Lari rumah kawan, cerita sama kawan. Ya. Nak cover lain kan orang tu? Ada juga macam tu. Macam ni contoh saya ko ni, kasihan dia. Nak raya tak boleh balik. Sian dia. Nama tak boleh sebab macam ni. Ui, family dia semua smash dia. Sebab. Abi kau dekat kampung macam mana macam? Tak jumpa kena cover lain dah. Buka 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 semua sekali hari eh. Tapi muka mumbai. Pakai baju jantan ah. Semua okey tapi tak ada pakai bra apa semua. Memang tak. Masyarakat susah sikit. Si kena accept family family kena accept be a girl. Kau cerita, cerita, cerita je. Kau cakap Orang kampung tak suka kan dengan bunda ni, hati kan. Semua cakap, keluarga pun, mak bapa, ayah, ibu, fahamlah cakap sebab dia yang lain kita kan semua kan. Baik buruk pun kan dia juga kan. Lepas tu cakap, cakap, susah lah cakap. Nak, nak kembali ke, apa? Ke jadi lelaki pada itu, susah lah cakap. Abang abang kata apa? Ajak ai jumpa you direct. Kakak ai bunuh you di depan orang macam. Yalah, perlu tak accept semua lari, larilah. Semua datang KL, jumpa-jumpa sana semua ceritalah. Ada dari Kedah, okey dari Terengganu, dari Sabah. C'est l'âge, c'est magnifique, c'est passion, attraction, c'est magnétique Jusqu'à la fin, même si je termine son amnésie Cette musique est l'usine pour le magnifique Oui c'est l'âge, c'est magnifique, c'est passion, attraction, c'est magnétique Jusqu'à la fin, même si je termine son amnésie Cette musique est l'usine pour le magnifique My name is Misha, I'm from Laika But now I'm based in Kuala Lumpur And I'm working as an outreach worker in Pink Triangle Foundation. I'm a transsexual. We also like to uh, reduce discrimination against our community. Uh, I had to leave home when I was 18 years old. Okay, that, that time I was home five. At that time when I was outside and, and earning my own living, that's the time where I really know about, you know, transsexual. Now being in the top five. Thank you so much to all the judges. You feel nervous right 
this event is actually very prestigious and very important to all the Maknya community here in Malaysia and in fact worldwide because it gives us a purpose to live rather than being ridiculed and rather being insulted all the time. Here we are to explore our own beauty which people cannot really appreciate but the people among us we appreciate and this is how we show to the world that we deserve to be on this earth and deserve to exist. Kita tidak anggap bahawa transseksualisme ini satu benda normal sebab pada kita dalam dalam ajaran kita tentang teori kejadian manusia itu tidak normal. Yang normal ialah yang laki-laki. Yang normal ialah yang wanita. Kalau kamu hadap diri kamu kepada agama asal yang betul kejadian asal yang ditentukan oleh Allah dari awal yang dijadikan manusia demikian tidak ada perubahan pada ciptaan Allah There's a lot of our patients who felt that they are actually uh, women caught up in a male's body and they want to change their sex to a woman. And so they have to go through this at least two years screening before we do that. Once the three groups are satisfied, the psychiatrists, the, uh, the psychometricians and the OBGYN or the surgeon is happy with it, then we will proceed with the operation. This seems to work fine for a few years, and the registration then based on a recommendation, and they would change their IC with no problems at all. And there were no kind of social upheaval, they get their jobs, and uh, they go for job interview, they show their IC, and they can get passport, and their gender then based on their IC. And so things seem to be fine, or so I thought at the time. This was at Masjid Negara. I think there were 20 muftis who called us to explain what we were doing. So I brought my team and made a presentation on how they are rigorously thinking and explained the theory behind this, explained the, uh, the scientific evidence which we have, why we are doing this, and then of course explain the, the social impact where these people are allowed to be integrated into society seamlessly. So anyway, after the presentation, a few weeks later, we well, I receive a letter to say that, you know, this is now forbidden under Islam. Kalau Malaysia tak kuat agama, mungkin saya akan operate. Mestilah setiap hati saya selalu, kalau boleh kan, nak jadi perempuan sepenuhnya, tapi you Duduk Malaysia, dia tak guna, you operate pun, you duduk dalam Malaysia tak guna. You tak boleh maju ke mana pun. Agama menyebut dalam hadis Nabi, misalnya Nabi kita, SAW, dia melaknat orang yang laki-laki menyerupai wanita. Dia juga melaknat orang perempuan yang menyerupai laki-laki. Kalau dia membuat Pembedahan jentina itu dari uh, hasil penyelidikan yang definitif 
yang membuktikan bahawa gender dia dia yang sebenar ia itu dengan alat-alatnya sekali. Hanya dia ada dua alat. Ha, kalau itu yang berlaku dia hermafrodai nak menguatkan alat yang memang dominan dalam diri dibuat hormon terapi dan lain-lain. Ha, itu tidak menjadi masalah dalam masyarakat. Dalam ajaran agama pun tidak menjadi masalah. Dalam undang-undang pun tidak jadi masalah. Yang menjadi masalah ialah orang yang khayal dia adalah perempuan yang dilahirkan dalam tubuh laki-laki. Kemudian dia bercakap kepada orang, I was a woman born in a, a boy's body. I would say that you know in Malaysia our Islam practice is very different from some other Islamic countries. Okay, in like in Egypt and Iran, they actually allow sex change if it can be proven that you know the transsexual um, really have to be you know have to have a sex change in order to have a better life. As a non-Muslim, I I always wonder why. Um, Islam is practiced so differently in Malaysia compared to Iran and uh, Egypt. Itu mungkin barangkali kerana ada tekanan dari kumpulan-kumpulan feminis mungkin. Kumpulan-kumpulan profesional yang dipengaruhi oleh apa yang saya panggil diguna juga di bar social imaginer. Yang berlaku di Iran misalnya dari apa yang saya baca dipengaruhi oleh kedudukan Khomeini sendiri misalnya dalam Teologi Syiah. Orang pun boleh bertanya kenapa kat sana boleh, kat sini tak boleh. You know? Even kita punya sendiri pun, kat sini pun dari segi uh, undang-undang syariah pun tak sama. You know, dia, dia tak standardize. So, tu yang pelik dia. Kadang-kadang undang kat negeri lain tu lain, undang kat negeri tu lain. So, maknanya kalau kat negara Malaysia ni lain, mana negeri lain pun lain juga. Tapi, setahu saya agama tu satu je lah. Dulu banyak-banyak tak tahu tentang hak dia, hanya ikut saja bila orang keluarkan fatwa gitu, kita terima saja. Sebab uh, bukan semua maknya yang nak buat pembedaan jantina. Ya. Jadi uh, kalau dia tak berdek buat pembedaan jantina, so maknanya isu itu tidak melibatkan dia. Tapi bila sudah dikeluarkan fatwa itu, bukan hanya uh, tak boleh buat pembedaan jantina di, di Malaysia, Um, IC pun dia orang tak boleh bagi IC perempuan ya. Jadi uh, masalah lah Yang masalahnya orang yang kat luar Itu saja It's not like you know you Sampai sekarang ni you ada krisis What kind of krisis? We don't have krisis Yang orang yang buat krisis pada kita That is like they don't recognize us Eh samanya Kalau dia tak recognize as wanita pun Just recognize as samanya cukup lah kalau diletak dalam ID, ID kita pun seks tu TS ke TG pun we, we are happy okay. with it. We are okay with it. Tak semestinya you know you nak letak perempuan sana you know and um, bagi macam-macam ni lah yang bagi kita is is okay. Itu saja recognition yang kita nak. Rather than you know you dah buat sex change. Muka perempuan dan perempuan sex male. What is that? Siapa yang confuse? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, I just want to inquire lah. Uh, so, inquire only, yeah. Just inquire. Okay, uh, pasal isu-isu um, yang transseksual yang telah membuat pemedahan sepenuhnya, whether they are allowed to change their name or you know whatever particle in their IC. Macam mana tu? So, kalau tak mistaken I lah kan, dia punya tu ambil dia pun masih kita lagi. So, even though let's say kalau you want to The National Registration Department doesn't allow that, so you will have to actually take it up to court to get a declaration, like declaratory order from the court to allow you to go to the National Registration with a copy of that order and say that look here, I've got the order from the court, do it. So here personal liberty was defined 
as constituting also the right to one's identity. I think that is how I read it and that's my understanding of that decision, that particular decision. And I think this is mind-blowing in the sense that we, we are perceived as an Islamic uh, Asian country and yet uh, we have created uh, new frontiers with this decision and I believe uh, this is very encouraging. I think it's a very isolated case. In future, may any other court will follow that decision or not, we will not know, we have to see. So we will have to wait for something more substantive. And, um, and so we will have to wait for that to come up. But of course, we are really willing to take it up and, and rely. Of course, we will be waiving this, whichever judge that we do this matter, wave it at him and says, look here, there is a decision on this point, you should allow it. So if you want to go for this, you know, complete change of all, all your identification papers to male to female, you will have to have a complete sex change operation. After when the fatwa came out, and then after that, you know, they are they are not accepted anymore, you know, as a legal entity. So then, you know, they cannot change their IC and so on. I think it went downhill for them. More than fifty percent of uh, the respondents in my research um, were sex workers. They started doing sex work basically because uh, they couldn't get good jobs. Susah sistem nak cari kerja. Ni ada ni. Nama tak jumpa. Apa sya? Baiklah. Nama tak jumpa. Okey sekarang saya duit. Susah. Record uh -huh. buka api dah. Buka api baru dah sampai. Baru sampai. Alun tak datang pula kan? Alun tu si. Bila nak buat tetek ni, kan Lopez pun dah buat semua. Seksi sekarang make up sekarang. Kalau kerja sana, mesti berangkut. Semalam aku berangkut, aku semalam 13, 14 orang. Malah aku banyak, hmm. apa tu? Banyak sangat ada. Saya hmm. rasa selesa macam ni. Saya jadi bos, saya jadi kuli. Daripada pergi minta kerja tempat lain, pergi sana interview, interview, interview dekat 10 kali pun tak dapat. Buat form. Sekarang ini bilik ini kau ambil alih. Hmm. Bolehlah aku kerja sini kalau macam ini. Kenapa tak boleh pula? Ke rumah dia nak tiga orang saja. Tak, tak betul-betul lah. Takkan tak boleh kerja sini. Ya Allah, sumpah. Tak tahu apa nak cakap. Nah, takut, takut sangat aku berangkut. If they get discriminated outside, they couldn't get a job, what do you expect? And some of them were telling me that they actually have to support their family. In fact, some of them do sex work quietly. I mean, you know, and then they are supporting their younger sister, brothers and sisters, you know, to go to college. And some of them have old parents to look after. Ini berapa ni? Tahu. Ya, dia kata dulu dia ambil. Dulu kan si Oyi hari ni kan tiga belo. Pak ambil lah. Sana adalah kena harga dan air. Kan dia minyak petrol pula. Saya ambil okay, per customer ada 40, ada 50. Kadang saya letak 40, dia tawar nak 30. Saya tawar balik 35, ha, macam itulah. Macam hari biasa, macam hari biasa boleh 3 orang, 4 orang, 5 orang, hari biasa. Tempoh yang paling baik hari raya, lah, masa cuti, cuti besar. Ha, tentu orang bercuti, banyaklah customer. Dia yang customer mabuk lama-lama, bila Dah kan tak boleh lama, dah lama sangat kan boleh jadi gaduh sampai atas. Dan juga customer nak pukul kita. Jeriklah. 
Kalau dia tak jerit, matilah you dalam tu bergaduh. When it comes to uh, practicing safe sex, most of them don't because they need the money. So when the client said, no, I don't want to use a condom, they just don't. My transsexual respondents were telling me that um, they found that uh, there are more of their friends, uh, transsexual friends, dying of AIDS in the past five years uh, as compared to uh, previously. Kadang ada setengah maknya tak guna kondom sebab customer boleh bayar mahal. Ada offer sampai 150 atau untuk tak nak pakai cap. For, for what for 150 baik nanti you dapat sakit. Selalu kalau polis, okay, dia akan menggunakan van. Okay, kita tahu dah itu polis. Okay, kalau macam kalau macam uh, jabatan agama kita tahu dah dia dia biasa pajero, van putih. Uh, Lepas tu situ kita cepatlah larikan diri. Isu yang paling besar, dia orang bukan sahaja maknya, dia orang pekerja sosial ataupun pelanggan lelaki. Jawi ada bagi apa-apa kuasa, dia macam polis kan, polis agama. Kalau dia orang buat langgan, melanggan orang dan sebagainya, waktu malam dan sebagainya, kalau ada operasi memang dia kena tangkap. Dan kita di atas dasar kasihan belah kepada dia dan masyarakat terpaksa kita membuat operasi dan operasinya antaranya operasi itu tetapi dalam satu segi lain kita mengadakan peluang supaya mereka mendapat counselling kerana kita kasih kepada mereka supaya mereka tidak celaka Saya pernah kena tangkap dengan jawi pernah naik kot, dilarang berpakaian wanita, salah di sisi agama Islam. Saya pernah tangkap dulu ada dia cakap, kalau you elok kecil-kecil, elok mati je. Tuan dokat selama dua minggu. Kalau you kat tempat saya kan, mesti you, you boleh rasa macam mana. Cuma berpakaian wanita je. Tapi ditempatkan macam di tempat macam orang bersalah membunuh, menyamun kedai mas semua macam kita ni walaupun pakai wanita macam salah ni terlalu besar. Kadang sedih tapi ni Malaysia kan, you sedih you menangis pun tak ada apa-apa perubahan. Tak, kalau tak guna juga sebab kalau you menangis you menangis sekali pun kan tak ada perubahan you kalau kena tangkap pun tetap you macam you macam pembunuh semua sama je tak boleh tak boleh accept kita macam ni cari kerja susah kalau ada menangis macam ni you kalau you kat tempat air boleh rasa macam ni ke depan maknya di Malaysia terlalu susah I got caught by the Jaim officers, the religious officers in Malacca. After they caught me everything, then I was sentenced to one month prison in Kajang. They asked me to like, you know, open my shirt and show my breast to, to, to the other inmates. And at that time, I can't do much because 
you know, it's only three of us there, and three transsexual was caught, and I'm the only one with breasts. So, I don't know about the other transsexual, but I really felt totally, totally humiliated. You know, they were like, it's like as if I'm giving a free show. At, at, at that moment, I was, I always just pray to God. I said, God, just take me away from this thing as fast as, as I could, you know. I, but I can't do much. How you expect people to like to be loyal to their own religion if their own religion condemn them? Selagi ada undang-undang yang against maknya, selagi itulah isu-isu maknya tu akan tetap ada. Bila I kata, okay, ha, ha, I, I nak tukar jantina, I tak nak keluar, I nak keluar Islam. Tu dah kira murtad. I, I deeply feel that Islam is a very beautiful religion. The problem is the people. You know, they are the one that making all these issues, that issues. You know, because I really feel that I'm, I'm also a God's creation. It's not a choice. This is not a lifestyle. That's why sometimes I just feel like, you know, disappointed with that kind of remarks. You know, uh, it's a lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle is this? If you face all this kind of problem, you know? It's like asking me to change the shape of my nose and my facial attributes, isn't it? It's already set. And for heaven's sake, you know, we are different. And I think we should be enriched by that. I have a future, if you can, if you have a chance, I want to go to the country. The nature is not like the country, you can accept the country, you can accept the country. If you can, you can give the country to the country to grow. It's an important job. Bila kita dapat kerja, kita boleh teruskan live. Bila tak dapat kerja, mesti nak kena pergi sundal lagi, set up worker lagi. Spend because you 